Hey, welcome back, Formidable Fabrications. So if you've been watching YouTube and saw my short I posted about the trailer with the crack in it, this is it. So I got it all prepped and ready. So what the client and I decided to do was to remove this whole tongue and rebuild a new tongue. So as you can see, this current tongue is one piece of steel that has been cut and welded. When this trailer is going down the road, all the weight of this tongue is resting on this part and the same down there. So we need to eliminate the stress right there. So what we're gonna do is do like every other trailer that's built and put in a tongue that goes actually under the trailer. So there'll be four points of contact instead of two. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get a heavy piece of C channel just like this. Actually, that's not even as heavy as what I got. Uh, we're gonna go under this tube, through here, this tube will be gone, through here, and then right back to the front. And we'll do the same on the other side and meet it back there, somewhere right about there. So what that's gonna do is it's gonna give us one, two, three, four points of contact. And what I did forget to mention is once I pull this piece out, I'm gonna have another sturdier piece that goes across. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut this tongue off right here, take this piece out, and then run a heavy piece of C-channel across for support. And that'll be welded here and down there. And as the new tongue goes across it, it'll be a point of contact for it. So we we'll have four points of contact. So what we have to do to prep this is we have to disconnect the wiring back in this area. And we have to disconnect the hydraulic hoses that run the hydraulic hoist. So they run along here through this metal pipe and into the box. So we're gonna take the box off. Now this is a hydraulic trailer jack instead of a wind up one. So we need to disconnect this and we need to make good measurements because all these pieces need to go back in the same spot so I don't have to buy longer hydraulic hoses for this project. So that's the project at hand. Okay, so I got the trailer tongue cleaned off pretty good. I had to get this box, which contains the hydraulic pump and all the controls. And then I also had to cut the jack off and take off all like the other little pieces. But this box was welded in multiple different spots and it was held on with extra pieces of metal, like on the sides and the front that had to be cut off. I couldn't just like cut a few welds and pull the box off. That was really tedious. And then the jack was welded on three sides, but they were really deep welds. So I had to get the angle grinder in there and really, uh, really dig in to get those welds good enough where I could take a chisel in there and pop it out. Since this is really, really heavy steel, I'm just thinking I'm just gonna start cutting little chunks off here and there to make my job easier to move all this stuff out. So I didn't bother filming any of this stuff. It was really tedious, like I said. And I think if I did a time lapse of it, the time lapse would probably be boring as hell too, just because the time lapse would probably look like normal time because of the time I spent just doing stuff. So anyway, let's get to work and actually get to the get to the root of this job here. So when I'm using a bandsaw and I'm cutting things like this, generally I like to go almost all the way through so there's a little bit of steel left. And then I'll go switch up to the other side and that side I may cut all the way through. So what will happen, especially with bandsaws, is if you cut just the one side of something that has a lot of pressure on it, like this trailer tongue, you could end up binding up the blade and it'll end up getting stuck in there. And you'll see this on the next piece I cut. But I cut the first one and then I realized I didn't cut it deep enough. So I went back and keep cutting back and forth little by little just because I didn't know how much force was actually on this to hold it. See, now that I have that piece cut, I can bend it under and it'll pop right off and I don't have to worry about my blade getting stuck. Now you'll see on this one, I actually go down and I actually do get stuck a little bit. And once I get the blade out, then I realize what happened to it.
but right in here it's completely smooth and that's just enough to mess up the blade so luckily i had one more spare blade left that was a lennox blade which uh, i do like those blades so anyway um yeah the band saws are a little finicky but either way i do have a circular saw made for metal but i really hate using it on these kind of instances where i'm going vertically and not horizontally i just don't feel like i have a lot of control with it and i just feel like i'm gonna end up gonna like cut a finger off or something so i end up using um band saws for this kind of stuff even though i'm not really a huge fan of using band saws in general They're, the cuts aren't super straight um, on average and the blades always get jammed up when you're trying to cut things like this and the torch was just going to be too messy of a job so we're back the next day um, I finally got all this stuff cut off, and it's it's pretty close. Uh, you can see it's not quite straight, but I just got to smooth that out a little bit. And then the same on this side. So this is a real pain. It wasn't worth filming trying to get all these weird angles because, honestly, it took me about three hours to, to get this corner piece off that was on there. It was just a mess. So I uh, just turned the camera off and just got it done. So what we need to do now... is I got this C-channel for the tongue and some of the cross bracing. So, and this stuff is heavy. Uh, this top piece is about 160 pounds and this bottom piece is 260. So there's, um, I didn't even bother trying to bring it in the garage. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I'm gonna cut it first to a, a close length, then I'll take it inside and use the chop saw to get a, a nice straight edge on it but now i'm just going to use a circular saw and just and just cut it in um, the meantime i got to get the uh got to get the bobcat and lift these up uh, uh, elevate them a little bit so i can so i can get a nice cut on them and then i'll take them into the garage All right, so I got this piece cut here, and my plan is to leave some metal exposed right here. That'll give me a real thick welding area to weld into right now. So the only thing I gotta do is 
clean up that gap a little bit. When I cut this, it wasn't like perfectly squared. So, but I got to make measurements from the back to the front. So when this bed goes down, this section right here will actually go inside of here. So I took a few minutes off camera and got this lined up. So there's going to be a gap in there, but uh, luckily this metal is thick enough. We'll just fill it in with weld. Um, we'll have plenty of material on here to weld. Uh, that'll get filled in nicely. And the back side, most of it touches or is very close. So we'll be able to take care of that. And then once we run the gusset over here, that'll tie everything in together really nice. So right now, so I don't lose my place, I'm gonna tack that side and this side just to make sure they, st they stay uh, in line perfectly. And then I'm going to clean off the edges around there so I can get some better welds. Okay, so that's welded up. Here's the essentially how the tongue is going to mount. So what I'm noticing is that there is only nine inches of ground clearance between the bottom of this rail for the tongue and the floor. So that's not a whole lot. So I'm noticing how these are. So these are same six inch C channel as this. So they are notched. So they're up about three inches higher. So if you can see over in that one, that one is notched so it actually fits up into that beam about halfway. So really, uh, you only got three inches hanging down. So with the nine inches we have here, plus three will give us 12 inches of ground clearance, which would bring it up to here, which still isn't a lot, but it'll be equal to what that is. So I think that's what I'm gonna have to do. So I haven't got these all lined up perfectly yet. So for this one, I'm thinking I can just cut a notch out of here, slide it up over here, and just weld this side, and I don't have to weld anything on that because it's going to be flush there, but weld this whole section, and then what goes underneath. So the tricky part is this one. Um, I didn't plan on using square tubing, which would have made my job easier looking back at this. I didn't think, when I originally planned it out, I didn't think the nine inches would be so close to the ground. It just didn't seem like that big of a deal, but now that I'm looking at it, it looks a lot smaller and I don't really care for it. Um, so what I think I'm gonna have to do is I don't wanna notch this and compromise any structural integrity. I can notch that because that's the end. So I'm not worried about that, but this I don't wanna notch. So I'm gonna have to notch this 
in like a upside down U shape. So when I notch it, so when I notch it, you're gonna have the beam that goes across and then you're gonna have the, the tongue. So if you're doing a cutaway section, you're gonna cut this part to slide the other beam up. But when you slide the other beam up, it's gonna look like this. So you're gonna have weld here and here, but this part is gonna be open. So then we have to take a filler piece of metal to fill in this section. Otherwise the whole front of the trailer is just gonna be supported by this section right here, if that makes any sense. So that's what we're gonna do. And then for this, once we find the midpoint and we can get a square front, then we'll just notch these off right where they need to be, mount the plate to it, and then mount the channel on the front that the hitch mounts to. And then from there, we can just mount our cross brace for the jack and the other cross brace for the um, box with all the hydraulics in it. And then the back will be mesh. And then we're gonna put the spare tire holder right here. So hopefully everything I'm showing you isn't super convoluted or sound weird. That's just how my thought process goes on how I figure out how to do this stuff. So I actually did draw out, so I did actually draw out this whole front section here on graph paper to kind of get an idea of measurements and, you know, the distances between everything. So I had a baseline to line this up with. So I didn't just throw them on there and hope for the best. I actually have some measurements So I actually have some baseline measurements that I made that I based this on. The hard part is now is getting this center line to go up here. I'm gonna have to snap a string line or something to, to do it. But yeah, so that's the basis. All right, well, we're back. Uh, it is the week after New Year's. And as you can see, there's a lot more done. Um, I didn't record a lot of it. Uh, I was actually back and forth between doing family things and doing small little odd jobs that kept popping up. Um, the trail actually took about a week longer than I was expecting to only because I got a bunch of jobs that were like, we need to get it done. You know, uh, we're in a rush. So needless to say, um, I was just working on this in between um, those other jobs in between family events. So uh, as you can see, uh, the jack's mounted, um, the channel that holds the hitch is mounted. Uh, I doubled up on the C channel by the front to give that hitch area an extra support and to put extra support onto the jack so there wouldn't be any deflection in the jack. Um, so at this point, I'm just uh, getting some acetone, cleaning it up. I want to get some spray paint on this thing and so everything is uh, welded up on this. Uh, you can see behind the jack, there's uh, two bars that hold up the toolbox. And I think that's, uh, that's about the majority of it. It wasn't anything overly complicated. 
and you can see uh, there's some spray paint on the tongue. I got the box mounted and the jack mounted. Um, really, I just need to get this stuff mounted so I could raise and lower the bed to make sure that everything fit right before I really did everything final. All right, so here's the part I've been waiting for. I just put the box on and hooked up a hydraulic jack, hooked up the, well, temporarily hooked up the hoist, and here's the controller. So let's see what happens. In the words of a wise man, contact. Oh, the trailer moves. That, that is a vast improvement. Because last time I raised up the trailer, the, the trailer itself stayed and the tongue actually measured a two inch difference when so I actually measured a two inch difference between the tongue movement and when that and when the trailer actually started moving. That's how much play there was. So the whole tongue would move two inches before the actual trailer would move. Right now we're getting an in, as soon as this tongue moves, the trailer instantly moves. Ready? Let's do it again. I'm gonna hit it. Instant. And before when I took the pressure off the tongue and put everything on the jack stands, this tongue actually flexed down on top of the weight that was already on it. So it's already, uh, it's already working. So let's retract it. Done. All right, let's try the hoists. Very nice. All right, so we need to take out these wooden blocks. I need to lower this down and see how well it fits in here. So if my calculations are right, this should slide right behind there. Wow, that is tight, but it is absolutely perfect. A little too perfect, actually. I may have to trim a little bit. I'm not really sure what. So I feel like there is something holding this up. Okay, so I just wanted to point something out here real quick. So there's a gap in there, which I thought was something I did. Um, maybe I didn't measure it right, or there was something holding the bed up from going down that last half inch. Um, but now since the trailer is back to the client, the client's used it. Um, I actually saw the trailer in use, and that gap is still pretty much the same. Um, I honestly think the trailer is bent a little bit, and that's as far down as that bed is going to go. Uh, I don't think it has anything to do with anything I did. I just think the trailer is a little bit bent. Um, you can flex it down with some extra weight and make it go down. But once again, it's just I think the trailer has just been used so hard and it's just a little bit bent. So for all you perfectionists out there, just like myself, that is looking at this thing thinking I did something wrong. I actually didn't. I think it's just a flaw in the trailer build. All right, so you can see I just got done building the new spare tire holder and I cut the old one off. Um, so what had happened is this one was too low and they hit a curb and it like bent the tire like up into the, up into the trailer. So we decided to relocate it here. There's supposed to be a mesh. Um, so there's supposed to be like a mesh toolbox kind of deal in here for them to put chains and stuff in here. So I need to make sure that that doesn't interfere with this. And I also need to make sure that when this closes, that the tire doesn't rub against that and then cause the dump not to close properly. So let's mount the tire and see how it looks.
So there you have it, the tire's mounted. It does not interfere with the tarp. And there's plenty of room where the dump can go up and go down and not worry about the tire hitting the cross member. So the trailer is a wrap, everything is done. Um, I just installed this electrical box, it has all the wire connections in it, installed the new handle. So everything is painted up, we got the uh, mesh in here to put chains and load binders and such in there. And everything is, has its final welds on it and it's ready to go for the client. So I hope you guys liked the video I put out. Um, this was a especially tough one just because the length of time it took to get it done. And I wasn't able to, I wasn't able to focus 100% on the trailer every single day. So everything got kind of broken up. Um, I feel like the video wasn't as in depth as it could be. So in the comments below, uh, please let me know if you liked the video, if you didn't like the video, and especially if you didn't like the video, please comment and tell me what you want to see more of. Uh, do you want to see more of the actual welding, the fabrication, the metal cutting, um, close-ups of fitment and measurements? You tell me what you guys want to see. I do it all here. I just don't know exactly what to film is going to I just don't know what exactly to film that is going to bring you guys the most out of the video. So please, in the comments, let me know what you guys think. There's a lot of stuff I didn't film only because it was too much to try and film at one time, or I couldn't get good camera angles, or sometimes I just like to zone out and just do my own thing. But at the end of the day, I want to make videos that you guys will like. So um, please just let me know what you guys want to see. Um, hopefully the video helps. Hopefully it's just entertaining. I don't know. Let me know. But uh, either way, please like and subscribe and definitely tell anybody else that you know that would enjoy something like this to subscribe to. I'm really trying to get my channel out there and the algorithm's kind of weird. So um, please, anytime you can share it, comment, like it. Much appreciated. It helps the channel out so much. The more people I get, the more opportunities I have to explore different avenues of different kinds of projects and different stuff I can bring you guys. Um, I'm just limited to what I have, what I have coming in right now. So the more exposure I have, the more people I can get bringing stuff into me to fix and to fabricate, which will in turn get better videos for you. So thanks. And I'll see you in the next one.